Hello, EBS viewers. Welcome to Great Minds. I'm Stephen Walt, professor at the Harvard Kennedy School. In my first lecture, I explained the basic elements of the realist approach to international politics. As a reminder, realism seeks to explain how states behave in the international system. It doesn't mean that realists like this behavior or that they think states ought to be aggressive or even that they believe might makes right. The question is, does realism help us understand the most important factors that shape how states really do act? In this lecture, I'm going to explain why thinking like a realist is actually the right way to think about international politics. For this reason, and it's maybe surprising if you think of realism as a hawkish way of thinking about foreign policy, but realists tend to be more open to looking for mutually beneficial agreements with adversaries that might leave both sides better off. For realists, diplomacy and compromise are critical tools. For idealists, the solution to a bad relationship is eliminate the evil government that's causing the problem. Unfortunately, trying to get rid of governments you don't like usually gets lots of people killed. So the world might be better off if more people thought like realists and acted according to realism's logic, especially in powerful countries like the United States. I think that's definitely the case, and it's unfortunate that there are very few really true realists left in the American foreign policy establishment. Instead, they tend to rely much more heavily on liberal ideas. So let me talk a little bit about how American foreign policy might be different if realists had more influence or if realists were even in charge. If realists ran US foreign policy, there would have been no NATO enlargement, or it would have ended after the initial entry of Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic. From the very beginning, realists like George Kennan warned and they've turned out to be right. Had NATO enlargement stopped in 2006, relations with Moscow would be much better today, Ukraine would probably never have been invaded, and Europe would in fact be more secure. If realists ran U.S. foreign policy, there would have been no invasion of Iraq in 2003. Realists opposed the war because they understood Saddam Hussein was already effectively contained and that the war would be a quagmire from which the United States would not easily escape. After September 11th, the United States and its allies should have focused on Al Qaeda instead of getting bogged down, occupying Iraq, and also occupying and trying to do nation building in Afghanistan. If realists ran the world, the United States and NATO would not have tried to topple Muammar Gaddafi in Libya, and Libya would not be a failed state today. Realists would also have warned Barack Obama not to try and overthrow Assad in Syria, not to say out loud, Assad must go well before the civil war in Syria was really going, and realists would have emphasized trying to get a negotiated settlement before hundreds of thousands of Syrians had died. If realists had been in charge during the Trump administration, the United States would have remained in the nuclear agreement that was, had stopped Iran from pursuing a nuclear weapon. Realists would also have supported the Trans-Pacific Partnership in order to reinforce the U.S. position vis-a-vis -vis China in Asia. Unfortunately, Trump didn't listen to any realists before he made those decisions. The central lesson of foreign policy realism is that the world is a dangerous place where trouble can arise unexpectedly and where there are no powerful agents, no powerful institutions that can prevent states from fighting. As I've said before, there is no central authority that can enforce agreements and keep and protect states from one another. For this reason, realism tells us to be careful and cautious in conducting foreign policy. It reminds us that military force is important, but it's also a crude instrument that causes lots of unintended consequences, that even a successful military campaign sometimes causes more problems than it solves. 
It warns also against excessive ambition because countries that try to do too much, that overreach, that try to impose their will upon others, inevitably provoke balancing behavior by others to contain them. Other states usually react badly when they're threatened, and especially when they think their survival might be at stake. Above all, realism warns against efforts to remake the world or idealistic crusades to export one's own principles without regard to the consequences. If you think like a realist, in short, you're likely to act in prudent and sensible ways. You'll be less likely to see enemies as pure evil and your own country as completely blameless. For all of these reasons, I believe if more people thought like realists, and there were more realists in positions of responsibility around the world, we would in fact have a more peaceful world. And that's why it's useful to think like a realist.